Hey everyone, welcome to part 21 of the Pokemon game series in Unity. So in this video we will implement sleep, paralyze and the freeze status conditions. Special thanks to all my Patreons for making this series possible. By becoming a Patreon, you can support me in the making of the series and get some cool rewards like access to the complete project files of the series. So let's start the video. Okay, so let's look at how to implement sleep paralyze and freeze so these statuses might prevent a pokemon from performing a move for example if a pokemon is paralyzed then one out of four times the pokemon won't be able to perform the move during its turn so to implement this we need to be able to define a function that is executed just before performing the move okay so in the condition class i'll create another action called on before move okay so on before move will be called before trying to perform the move and in the on before move function we will return a boolean indicating whether the pokemon will be able to perform the move or not so when we use action we can only assign functions that doesn't return any value so if we want to return a value then we should use func instant Okay, so I change action to func and in the case of func, we should specify the return type after specifying all the parameters. So we just have one parameter here, which is a Pokemon class and after that, I will specify the return type. So since we need to return a boolean, I'll make that as the return type. So now in the conditions db script, let's create the paralyzed condition. So I'll just copy paste burn and let me just change the name and ID. I'll also change the start message and for paralyze we don't need on after turn. Instead we need we need to assign a function to on before move. Okay so this function will also take Pokemon as a parameter. And since we have specified a return type, we have to return a value, otherwise you'll get an error over here. So let me just return true. So if we return true, it means the Pokemon will be able to perform the move. And if we return false, it means it won't be able to perform the move. So if the Pokemon is paralyzed, then one out of four times, it will not be able to perform the move, right? So in the on before move function, I'll generate a random number between 1 and 4. Remember the max value is always exclusive. That's why we give 5 over here. And we just need to check if this random number generated is equal to 1. Right, so in this case, we'll return false. So 1 out of 4 times, the Pokemon won't be able to perform the move. So let's also show a message like this Pokemon is paralyzed and it can't move. So I'll add that to the status changes queue. Okay, so I'll say something like this Pokemon's paralyzed and can't move. All right, so next inside our Pokemon class, just like for on after turn, I'll create a public function. And this function should actually return a boolean. And let's just return true by default. And in case you have a status condition with on before move, then we will execute that. So if on before move is not null, we can just return the value that we get after calling it. Okay, so for the Pokemon, I'll just pass this Pokemon. And we don't have to use dot invoke in this case since we have already checked it from here. So the reason why I didn't write it like this using the null conditional operator is because it'll return null in case the status doesn't have an on before move function. And we don't want that. We want to return either true or false. Alright. 
So let's actually call this function before performing the move. So inside battle system, in run move, we will call on before move on the source Pokemon. Okay, so on before move will return a boolean. So let me store that in a variable called can run move. So if this function returned false, then we just want to stop this coroutine and we don't want to perform the move, right? So I'll check if can run move is false. And in that case, I'll use heal break to stop the coroutine. So we won't execute any of this and the move won't be performed. But before we stop the coroutine, we need to show all the messages in the status changes queue. So let's call the show status changes function. And for the Pokemon, I'll pass the source Pokemon. Okay, and we need to show the messages in the status changes queue, even if can move is true. Since there's a chance that we might have pushed messages into it, even if we return true. Alright, so we have done everything we need for the paralyzed status. So let's try testing it. So in our moves, I'll duplicate poison powder and create a move called Thunder Wave. And then we also change the name. So this move, instead of inflicting poison, it should paralyze the enemy. Right? So let's actually assign this to a Pokemon. I'll assign this to Pikachu. Okay, let's say it learns it at level 10. And in the player party, I'll make the first Pokemon Pikachu to make it easy to test. And let's try testing the game. And let me start a battle real quick. Okay. So if I use Thunder Wave, Bulbasaur should be paralyzed. Okay, so you can see Bulbasaur was paralyzed and it wasn't able to perform its move. Alright, so let's try continuing the battle. Okay, again you can see Bulbasaur was able to attack during its turn. So yeah, let's try again. It wasn't able to attack three times in a row, which is pretty weird. So let's try again to see if it can attack in the next move. So yeah, you can see it was able to attack. So basically one out of four times, Bulbasaur shouldn't be able to attack during its turn. Okay, so we have implemented Paralyze. So next let's implement Freeze and Sleep. So freeze is pretty similar to paralyze. So I'll just copy paralyze and modify it. So let me change the ID name and the start message. Okay, so if a Pokemon is frozen, then it won't be able to move. So let's just return false by default. And during a turn, there is one by four chance that it might cure the status. Okay, so if a random number generated between 1 and 4 is equal to 1, then we should cure the status, right? So I'll show a message like this Pokemon is not frozen anymore. And I'll return true. And we also need to cure the status, right? So inside the Pokemon class, below set status, I'll also create a public function to cure the status. Okay, so in this function, I'll set status equal to null. And inside our free status, let's call Pokemon.cure status to cure the free status. Okay, so that's it for the free status. We are not going to test it since it's pretty similar to paralyze. Okay, so next let's implement sleep. So if a Pokemon falls asleep, it won't be able to attack for a certain number of turns, right? So we need to keep track of the number of turns since the Pokemon started sleeping. So in the Pokemon class, under the status, I'll create an integer called status time. 
all right so we can use this to specify how many turns the pokemon should sleep right so let's create the sleep status inside conditions db so i'll just copy paste the free status and let me change the name id and all that okay so we don't need any of this logic and in case of sleep we should also set the status time while setting the status right so inside the condition class i'll create another action called on start and it'll take a pokemon as the parameter Okay, so we can set the status time inside on start. So let me assign a lambda function. So when the sleep status is set, the Pokemon should sleep for a random number of turns between one and three. So I'll assign a random number between one and three to the status time of the Pokemon. Okay, so let's also print it in the console so that we know how long it's going to sleep. So if a Pokemon is sleeping, it should not be able to perform the move. So by default, we will return false. And every turn, we should decrement our status time. And in the dialog box, we should show that the Pokemon is sleeping. Okay. And if the status time reaches zero, then the Pokemon should wake up, right? So we'll call Pokemon.cure status. And we'll also show a message like Pokemon woke up. And finally, we'll just return true, indicating that the move can be performed this turn. So, yeah, that's it for the sleep status. But we should call the on start action while setting the status so inside the set status function of the pokemon i'll call status dot on start dot invoke okay so for the pokemon i'll pass this pokemon all right so once again i'm using the null conditional operator to make sure that the code doesn't crash if a status doesn't have an on start action Alright, so let's create a move and test the sleep status. So I'll just duplicate Thunder Wave and rename it to Sing. And the Sing should cause the sleep status. So let me change that. And let's assign Sing to Jigglypuff. And let's say it can be learned at level 10. Okay, so in my player party, I'll make you clip of the first Pokemon. And let's test the game. So if I start a battle, and if I use Sing, you can see that Borbaso has fallen asleep and it wasn't able to perform the move. And in our console, you can see that it will sleep for three moves. Okay, so let's test that. So yeah, you can see it's sleeping and it wasn't able to attack. So let's try again. And yeah, again, it wasn't able to attack since it was still asleep. So it should wake up this turn. Let's test that. Okay, yeah, you can see what was a wake up and it used a tackle. So yeah, sleep is working just like we wanted. So we're done with all the status conditions. So I'll stop the video here. If you think this video is helpful, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. That really helped me out. So I'll see you in the next video.